future will be allowed one twenty words every day to say and need to get through all our routine exchange with an eye on work count. Hey guys, welcome back to the Woolen Homestead. This is a video podcast about knitting, spinning, and hand dyeing yarn. My name is Tiffany. And I'm Ethan. And we're coming to you from Midland, Michigan. You can find us as the Woolen Homestead on various social media, as well as the yarn that we dye at thewoolenhomestead.etsy.com. You'll also find links below in the description box to all the places you can find us. Hello everyone, welcome back. It's episode 70 and it is Thursday, October 4th. So and it's finally chilly out. And yeah, October's glorious. already flying by, to it be honest. Is. We're almost all the way through the first week. I know it, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy, unreal. next week's your birthday. It is, the So it's exciting, yay. And um, yeah, so it's been a week and we got the last week's podcast, finally got up uploaded like three days ago. What a but nightmare <laughs> that was. What a nightmare. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> but yeah, it's up now. It's in two parts, but whatever, it works. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'm just glad it's up there. It, but... was, it was ridiculous. <laughs> so, you know, iMovie is a good program, but yeah, it's free. once in a while, it's it's like, just a bear. <laughs> and it was something with iMovie. It wasn't YouTube, but yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. I thought it was I would love first. to blame YouTube. Oh, I know. Like, that would I know, be great, like, but it, it was no, iMovie. It was iMovie. Um, and it's a relatively new Mac that we've got, too, mm -hmm. and everything's updated, but... You know how it goes. Yeah. They... I even like cleaned it out too in case it was bogged down. Yeah, because you're a file saver. Yeah, oh like, yeah, you big, save time. Every big time. Every single file or picture that you've got. Yeah. So I'm I have different. to go through and I have to go through and like weed it out every once in a while. I'm completely different though. Yeah. I get rid of photos so quick. Yeah, you can just it's rip so the band aid off, get rid of them. Yeah, it doesn't Not really me. bother me. <laughs> I'm a but I use my phone I'm a, a file lot. hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> but I use my I use my phone a lot like a notepad. Mm -hmm. I'll take a picture. And it just to remind me of something rather than writing it down. Yeah. Um, if, for example, if, I, if I'm measuring shades, I will take a picture of the tape measure up there rather than yeah. writing down what I need. And I just, so I accumulate a lot of photos. So I have to clean them out all yeah, the time. Yeah, so you're like constantly, well, see, right. I do that too, but I don't go and clean them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, do that. I just never go in You and should clean. try it. It I makes should. your phone so, every time I borrow your phone, I always, so always complaining about how slow it is. It's so slow. And Which is I mean, funny because it's faster to me now than my old phone. So. Yeah, and and I mean your phone is a little bit slower than mine just based on yeah. the model, but not that like when I had an SE, it was a lot faster, <laughs> and it's just. <laughs> but you you like to collect things, and I do, I do. You know, not just I really do, not just files. I mean, yeah. I have a hard time throwing stuff away, but... Well, I remember when we got together. Mm-hmm. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, yeah. You, we you did a saying, big purge. Like, yeah. Yeah. And you were saying, I, I want more space. Yeah. I don't want a lot of clutter. I don't like clutter. I, yeah. I can't stand clutter. <laughs> but... Which is good, because I, I don't like it either, but I'm just not as good as, like, naturally knowing how to clean out stuff and, like, get rid of things where, like, it kind of, like, overwhelms me and then I just don't. Well, we had a you breakthrough know. at one point. Yes, we did. Yep. Yes, we did. And what I, was that breakthrough? <laughs> <laughs> well, I I told you, you don't have to display everything you yeah, own. And you I don't totally have to put would. everything you own on display. <laughs> you can take stuff and go, oh, I want to put this out this month, and then next month I'll yeah. kind of redecorate a little bit and, and I would change just the put stuff everything that I've got. out. Everything that you own. Everything. It's not so everything, but hey, a lot of stuff. But it's not stuff. messy. Not messy. Right, no. It's not like you've got stuff piled in No, the no, it wasn't it's like just, that. It's just you tend to... It wasn't like hoarders buried alive. It wasn't no, <laughs> no, nothing like that. What, what it'll end up being is just like no design scheme whatsoever. Yeah. Just everything that was, you own kind I of I remember out. in college, one of our RAs, um, she, uh, <laughs> she, came, she came into our room one time and she was like, oh... You have a very eclectic taste. Is what she told me. <laughs> I, was like, yes, I, I think that's uh, I think that was that's inside. a nice way of saying you collect a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's really funny. Stuff can or you've got no flow. <laughs> stuff can attest to that. She was my roommate for a long time, so she knows. Yeah, she was. Poor stuff. <laughs> I feel for you, stuff. Yeah, he gets it. <laughs> I get it. But yeah, no, I, but I, last year though, I really got into the life changing magic of tidying up, and that, I got rid of a lot of stuff. And, and I, I still like to do that. I'll go through and. I'm terrible with names. I want to say it's Marie Calendar, but I know Marie it's not. Marie, Marie Kondo. Marie <laughs> All right. Not the pot pie. I lady. knew. <laughs> they're both thrifty, I imagine. And. Marie Calendar. Calendar. <laughs> 
She makes good pies. Yes, yeah, she does. But, um... It is Marie Callan and it makes the pies, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And all those, uh... Razzleberry. Mm -hmm. She makes raspberry pie. Yes. Raspberry is the best. Yes, and good pot pies. It's even worth picking the seeds out of your teeth. Oh, totally. <laughs> it's, it's totally worth it. So good. But yeah, I, I got a lot better last year, though, once once I went through that, uh... Mm -hmm. Purging. Yeah. <laughs> got rid of a lot. Got rid of, stuff. of a ton of stuff. Yeah, and it felt good. Yep. I really liked it. So that I yeah I really liked that book, and I I feel like I've pared down quite a bit of stuff. Well, and we balance each other out really well. Yeah. With the amount of stuff we keep, because I have a tendency to just chuck it. Yeah. And and then you know two oh, weeks later, three months later, whatever, I'm I need whatever <laughs> I threw away. <laughs> Because I just like, no, nope, God, no, I've got no good. emotional attachment to like, anything. Um, unless it's handmade. I've got a lot yeah. of emotional attachment to handmade stuff or something that was really special, you know, that I bought specifically or somebody bought specifically on a, on a, on a trip. Like, a, yeah. uh, it, it, if it's got it meaning was, behind yeah, it. Yeah, if it's got some sort of meaning. But I don't. I used to do it as a kid a lot, but I don't attach meaning to things that yeah. didn't originally have any meaning. Like, I don't look for it. Sure. You don't um, make up a meaning for something. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so I'll just throw stuff out, you know, <laughs> and, um, or donate it to thrift stores. I yeah. do that more often than not now. I just donate yeah, I've got a big bag to take Army. over there, actually. But. Because we did it a couple weeks ago. We went through a bunch of stuff again. I, I really like doing it, actually. Except for bolts. Bolts and, like, bolts? building materials. <laughs> I save those. I save... Uh, bolts, building materials, and wiring. Yeah, your workbench is pretty, pretty cluttered. No, well, it's uh. not cluttered. It's a workbench. <laughs> it's a workbench, guys. <laughs> guys, help me out here. Your workbench <laughs> should have a lot of stuff because you need not it. Not like I can talk. <laughs> it's a workbench. You got to have supplies <laughs> on a workbench. Don't bring the workbench into this. Can't touch the workbench. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. Oh, we should talk about we're on our cows. <laughs> we're on on cows, aren't we? Yeah, that's, we should that's talk that's about Netherlands. Yeah. Okay. So cows. <laughs> oh, we should talk about what we're wearing. Okay, you don't have any. I'm knitwear? not wearing anything okay. right now. Knitwear wise, you have clothes on, but. <laughs> well, as far as they know, at least from here up, I do. Could be an anchorman situation. <laughs> they don't know. He's got clothes on. I promise. I do. Um, or do I? <laughs> You'll never know. Um, so I am, oh my God. I am wearing my Speckleum Pop Shawl by Stephen West. This was um, last year's Mystery Knit Along, and I wore this purposefully because tomorrow starts this year's uh, Mystery Knit Along Texture Time. So what's his, I'm really excited. Uh, what's his little cover for that? A little cover photo that he always does. Oh my does. gosh. Okay, so this time I think he's... They're always really artistic. Yeah, I think this time he's loud. got... Um, oh, I saw a recent one where he's got stitch markers and like chains and like <laughs> and like sounds about right like um darning needles it's awesome it's so awesome but yeah so oh yeah i know exactly yeah did you see what that one pop about? up so yeah. yeah oh no i don't think that's the one though for the i think the one that he's got on the actual pattern is like he's just got a bunch of yarn on his head oh okay <laughs> it's awesome but uh so yeah that's what i'm wearing um this is knit all out of our yarn that i had dyed last year and then um the minis are just kind of random ones that i had dyed for this mystery knit along. So this year my palette is a little more subdued. So but I got the yarn wind up yesterday. Um and I'm really excited. So yay, cast on Rob actually got it sitting right over there. Yeah, that's why we looked <laughs> over there. But yeah, can't wait. I'm really excited. I guess it's supposed to be in our mailbox um tomorrow morning, but I work at seven. Well so, tomorrow morning our time or his time? Well he's in Amsterdam. So yeah, maybe it'll be well they're gonna be ahead of us, so it should be there by the time I wake up. Yeah. But so yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, but yeah, let's talk about knit alongs really quick. Um, we've got two of them going on. The Basket of Mittens Cal, which runs until December 31st, 2018. It's co-hosted with Carrie, who is my wool mitten. The hashtag is Basket of Mittens Cal 2018. Works in progress are allowed. You can also crochet. Um, any type of mitten, glove, or fingerless mitt is allowed. Um, you get double entries for using the wool and homestead yarn. And yes, yeah, so that's just going till the end of the year. Post any of your mittens in that uh, finished objects thread. Our other knit along is the My Favorite Color is October knit along. And the hashtag for that is uh, My Fave Color is October Cal 2018. Works in progress are also allowed for this as well as crochet. And anything that you think of as fall, totally allowed for this knit along. 
Um, you also get double entries for the Woolen Homestead yarn and triple entries if you use the My Favorite Color is October colorway. Um, which we don't have any in the shop currently, but we are going to But we some will tomorrow, tomorrow so because yay. I'm dyeing yarn today. Yes. I'm actually in my yarn dyeing outfit, if you're yes. <laughs> wondering <laughs> the what uniform. I dye yarn. Yeah, it is. Uh, what I dye yarn. At is, least you're a uh, fall, winter. Yeah, attire. no, not in the summer. In the, it's, it's never a proper temperature in, in oh. the garage when I go out and dye yarn because never. in the summer, it's blazing hot. Cause yeah. You can't run fans because the powder's so fine. Yeah. And in the winter, Winter's actually not as bad. You don't like it, I, but I do. The winter's fine I've for tried me. It. I've got Although like, we figured it out though. My my problem was I was staying out there the entire time and I wasn't like going in because I thought I had to be out there with the burners the entire time. Like I couldn't leave them. Oh yeah. So I just that was leave yeah. Them. So I bet I could probably try it again, but I still don't really like it. <laughs> but you don't it's mind right. it. <laughs> no, I don't mind it at all. I'm moving. Yep. Um so yeah, that's it for knit alongs. Um yeah. Let's see, let's get into events. Okay, so for events, we will be visiting the Ann Arbor Fiber Expo on October 27th. We will not be vending, but we will be attending and shopping. Yes, and we will. This time is really exciting because you are like actually gonna be shopping, you're not just be a, a yarn husband, so. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't at uh, Michigan Fiber Festival. Right, but like year. you, but look, Last at, year more, we were talking about so. earlier that like, um, you were well, yeah. Last year were definitely more so because you weren't even knitting last year. But well, I might have been. No, I, I wasn't. Were, I wasn't. We started it in the fall. Yeah. I'm a newbie. But, but um, but no. uh, this year though, at the fiber uh, fiber festival, you had just started that orange hat, and that was kind of like your gateway. To, oh, it like, was totally. Yeah. Just working with worsted weight yarn is so awesome. Yeah. So I feel like and, since the last festival until now, like you've really like learned what you really liked and um i think it's well, gonna be a game gotta, changer i gotta start on a sock pattern that doesn't fight me every step of the way too yeah. it, I, we'll find you one it's it's annoying <laughs> to try and be knitting and not, and not be able to just follow what's not just, yeah exactly because if you follow what's there yeah you end up with big holes in your socks <laughs> so um yeah <laughs> So I'm excited to try something, yeah. something new. But yeah, definitely the the hat was the it was a um, classic cuffed hat by Pearl Soho, and that yeah. was kind of my gateway. And it's it's and you had just way. started that at the last one. Yes, at the and, uh, yeah, last literally one. the day before, yeah, or the night before. So I think like now it's just gonna be a totally different. Yeah, you know, and, and now I've just in this span of time I've had I've knit up two hats and then that bandana cowl. Yeah. Uh, so. Which I'll get to show you guys in yeah, spoiler finished alert. objects. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Uh, no, we showed it on Instagram. It's not a spoiler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Th thanks for everybody that said nice things about yes. that, by the way. Yes. Yes. But I'm gunning for some uh, some circular needles. The, mm -hmm. Some 16 inch circular yeah. needles. Cause a I, good, like, hack. Yeah. I've gotten so. a little bit better at Magic Loop and stopping the laddering. We had a couple of really good suggestions on the podcast yeah, uh, that really, really helped out. But it's still kind of a pain. Yeah, it's still. I don't kind blame of a pain. you. I don't. I don't care for magic loop. Although, I'll talk about it later. I'm going to be doing it on a, another project of mine. I'm going to be doing magic loop. Yeah. <laughs> but so, it's just going to make it a little bit easier. So I'm probably going to get some of those Indian like artisan needles. So I think nice. I'm going to get uh, so nice. Possibly like some maple or cherry you know what, if they've though? got some. I didn't see them on the vendor list. What? But I bet they'll be there. They better be there. Maybe I missed them though. I was looking at the vendor list this morning. I didn't see them on there. Well. But. If they're not there, I might find something yeah. else because <laughs> I, I need to order online I, too. Yeah, that's true. I could do that, but I like meeting the people oh, I know. and like actually. I know it's super cool. You know, so I, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Um, and I'm always open to trying. And you might find a new, you know, a new exactly. person that we don't know about. There's a ton of people on that list that I didn't know. I'm I also, didn't recognize. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I'm gunning for that. I also want to get some more soap. Um, yeah. I don't know if Maple Kinder, Hill Farms is going to be there. I didn't see them on there either, but the Kinderhaven people are going to be there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right. They have really good stuff. Um, what are what are you looking forward to getting? Mm. Okay. <laughs> She's already got her. I uh, I got this planned. Um, I after my spinning experience that I'll talk to you about later, I'm going to look for some more um, woolen prep uh, something for spinning. So like bats, things like that. I have a lot of comb top. And so that's a very like specific way of spinning, and I feel like I've got that more in my wheelhouse than I do um, 
like a woolen spun. Okay. So, or, or a woolen prep. Um, I'm really like, when I showed the yarn that I, <laughs> I did, I was not <laughs> happy with it. So I, I, but I need more practice. I realized that I really need more practice with that. So I think I'm going to kind of fill up that part of my stash that I don't have. So yeah. And probably some soap. Um, I was thinking maybe a new like wool wash. Okay. I'm getting low on my other stick one. with lavender? No, I want to go for a different I was going to thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I like lavender just fine, but I've never smelled washed wool that doesn't smell like lavender. That's true, because that's, <laughs> that's, we that's all our, we have. Our main one, yeah. Yep. So it's so, funny. So, yeah, that'll be interesting. That's really um, funny. I didn't think about that. You haven't. I think mm. I'm also going to look for some worsted weight stuff. Uh, pot, no, bulky. Bulky. I want to find some bulky. <sighs> bulky Some hand dyed bulky at. yarn. That's cool. Um, and I might be dropping a big order on, on, uh, bulky weight yarn because I found a really neat sweater. Oh, cool. Um, I don't think I know about this. I can't even remember the name of it, but I've got it saved. Oh, no, you just tell me about it. Yeah, I've yeah, got yeah. it saved on my photos. Yep. So, <laughs> so I got to... Which you'll just delete it later. <laughs> no, not before I figure... Not before I get the pad. Yeah. Uh, but it comes with, like... I think it's in bulky weight, if I remember correctly. I'm almost certain it's in bulky weight, and it comes with, like, a water bottle holder in the front. Cool. It's designed for sportsmen. Oh, cool. So, pretty excited. Uh, the other so, thing yeah, I'm you're going to be knitting for, your first sweater. Yes. Like, yeah, I'm going to be awesome. knitting my first sweater. It's time to take the plunge. <laughs> well, Good I degree. wanted to go... You've, you're all, you're ready. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you totally are. I wanted to go hat, socks, cowl, and then sweater. and step myself off. Yeah. But I feel like I've probably... I was looking at um, at the pattern, and it was, I remember it was a free one. And I was looking at the pattern, and there was nothing in there I didn't know how to yeah. do. Yeah, so, isn't that cool? Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. <sighs> I'm so excited. The only other thing I want to look for at the Ann Arbor Fiber Fest is beard wax. If anybody has beard Ooh, wax, yeah. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to keep my eye out for it because I... Uh, we should, we'll check out the Kinder Haven the people because they have a ton of, me, of stuff there. For the life of me, I can't find a good beard wax. If anybody knows anyone that makes a good beard wax, comment down below because... Yeah, because it's different than beard... What was the other thing? Beard balm and beard wax are two different yes, things. Yes, because I was beard looking for that for balm. you last year for Christmas. Yeah, there's beard oil, beard balm, and beard wax. You find a ton of beard balm yeah. out there. Beard balm kind of gives it a sheen, makes it a little bit softer. Uh, beard oil is just to condition it, basically. And beard wax actually allows you to like form it into... into gotcha. Get your mustache out of your mouth... Anytime you see a guy with a longer beard or even a medium length beard like like mine out in public and it doesn't it isn't going in like a million different directions, <laughs> he's actually taking a lot of time to like comb yeah. it out like cuz beards don't just naturally grow straight down. They right. they, go they go every <laughs> which direction and yeah. unless you're a guy that's like blessed with a really really curly beard that just kind of like grows, you know, straight, like curls and then goes straight down. There are some guys out there that have that magic mix of genetics, but most of us don't. And so it goes every which direction. You've got to put a ton of work into it. Like yeah. guys with beards spend, I would guess, as much time on their beards as, as a lot of girls do oh, on their I hair. Bet. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I bet. So the bottom line is I can't find a really good beard wax that I like. The only stuff that has kind of worked is Honest Amish, and that's good stuff, but mm -hmm. it smells like licorice. Oh, yeah. It's actually, it's anise. Anise? Yeah. 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 And uh, and it smells like licorice, and I hate licorice. I do too. Uh, I can't stand it. Yeah, I'm not a fan. So I'm kind of looking for something else. Yeah. And it smells tolerable now, but I don't want my beard wax to be tolerable. Yeah, you want to actually have something that you like. Yeah. 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 I get you. So... That's yeah. cool. So I'm going to look for that. Hopefully there's somebody that... Because it's kind of like in that um, that homemade sort of sphere. Yeah. You, you totally. know what I mean? Totally. So I'm, I'm, I'm really kind of keeping an yeah. eye out for that. Um, I'm going to check out some project bags. I need a, I need oh, a Christmas yeah. project bag. I don't have a Christmas one. So I might look, check that out. See what I can find. Um, but yeah. Actually, that's another good thing for me, too. I could probably use another project bag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. You gotta grab your new one. Yes, I yeah. will. Um, let's see. What else do we have in events? Is that all we got in events? <laughs> yes. Yep, that's it for events because I was just talking about the West Nets mystery and along and I already talked about that. So, cool. yeah, all right. All right so, that's yeah, it. definitely come hang out with us. Yes, we'll be there. Fiber and we'll bring buttons again. We will bring buttons. We so, yeah, ask for buttons. for buttons. No, we've got some, don't we? No, are we, we out? We are out. <laughs> we gotta put an order for buttons. <laughs> I'm glad you knew that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that would. So been maybe bad. we won't have buttons because it depends on how long it takes to get here. But right. we'll probably have buttons. Okay. <laughs> we'll probably have buttons. <laughs> All right. This is like the 
the most like hodgepodge episode yet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, we're caught. Usually, I don't dye yarn on Thursdays, and yeah, I, this is the second week in a row I've had to do it. Yeah, so this this week it's really been, throwing you off. Yeah, it's been kind of crazy. Um, you know, we'll talk about more stuff in, in life stuff. Not as crazy as it has been. Sure, but it's just, just been for a, a loop. Yeah, I'm just. I need more hours in a day yes. is what the problem is. That's the only problem. It's yeah. not that it's been crazy. It's just that I haven't had time to get to everything that I need to get to. Well, it's also hunting season too. So that really. Yeah. And I've know. been selling stuff on Craigslist. And, yeah. And so yeah. Busy. Busy, busy. All right. All right. So, so yeah, let's get into finished objects. Okay. So you're up first finished objects. I got my bandana cowl finished. So I showed this last week on the podcast and this thing knit up so quick yeah you this is by uh pro fast. soho um which i'm really digging their patterns i know and i like they, them too i did one of their cowls before and i really like they it. knit up so well and what i really like is they um they they, they just even when, when you're not following the pattern correctly like it yeah. still kind of knits up well this is on worsted weight and i did get a question on instagram right because the original is on bulky the original is on bulky so i got a question on instagram on what I did because I like the original um I like the original like slouchiness of this it kind of like folds down mm -hmm. uh it, it's got enough room to come up over top of your face but the original is on bulky this is on worsted and so I had looked at a couple of the projects on Ravelry and you could definitely tell that they had substituted worsted for right. bulky they look great but they were shorter and I wanted to keep the same length so here's what I did if you want to use worsted and keep it the same length and relatively the same size as uh, the original pattern on, on bulky, you can, um, well, there's short rows, right? So you get your short rows done pretty much first, and then you do some uh, stock in that after the short rows. And if I remember correctly... You start from this point. Yeah, right? you start from this point down here, and then you do, you do a couple of rounds of... Um, alternating uh, purl and, and knit and then you start your short rows and uh, if I remember correctly after the short rows you, you do um, like three rounds of stockinette I did an additional five so like eight rounds of stockinette mm -hmm. and then I started in on uh, the decreases and then after each round of decreases, you do three more rounds of stock on that. I kept, kept it at that. For the needles, I used size sevens. They recommended size tens, but that was for the bulky. Right. Uh, and then for the bind off, they said that they went up to size 15s. I went up to size tens and it was really tight to get those tens in there. And so I don't know if you, if you want to go up a little bit higher, you probably could. Right now, I mean, it's got plenty of stretch. Like I have no problem getting right, it over yeah. top of my, um, over top of my face. Yeah. But if you wanted a little bit more stretch, you could probably go up to like twelves or something. But I would definitely the the row before the bind off, the rope like before the bind off, knit really loosely. So then you can get too. those bigger needles in. Yeah, because yeah, it was tough. It was almost impossible, or use metal needles. Yeah. Because with woods, and I was using and real pointy ones. Yep. Because with I was using Knit Picks the Caspian mm -hmm. uh, set, and those are I mean, as far as wood needles go, those are pretty slick. Yeah. But it was there was a couple of times when I was taking both hands to pull stitches. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, definitely knit the, and I'm sure that's with any bind off. But since you're really going up that needle size, I would really definitely yep. go up to That's so cool a size 10 or 12 for the bind off but yeah and you can see how it looks this is on our deep woods camo colorway by the way and a lot of people were really bummed they missed out on that so hopefully we'll have some more soon and this the deep woods camo will be in the shop this friday Maybe tomorrow oh wonderful. it's going to be on um it's going to be on sock weight yarn awesome Awesome, yep. awesome. So it's going to yeah, be on our sturdy this was a one-of-a-kind base. It was a one-of-a-kind base. This is BFL, and it's really, really soft. I like how soft it is, but I, you know, if I was to knit it up again, um, I think you really can't go wrong with the BFL, to be honest, but um, but I think our Merino would work just as well. I think we liked it a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. I yep, mean, this definitely. is still great, but the Merino, the Merino worsted is like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, you could see the... Um, 
in that camo. It's just... It's so cool. There's no pooling. No, and there's some like um, nice bright greens and some dark greens, a little bit of yellow green in there. Yeah. Um, it turned out really, really And great. then it's just over a nice neutral brown base. Yeah. And it works really well. It's really a good camo colorway. I've, I've worn it out hunting twice now. No, once. I didn't yeah. wear it out last night because it was a million degrees last night. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but God, it's, it's not today. Today degrees. it's cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's but today. The day before yesterday would have been what? Tuesday? Yeah, yeah. Tuesday. So Tuesday I wore it out hunting because it was a little bit cold. Yeah. And it was we had kind of a drizzle of rain, you know, just kind of a just kind it's of like nasty misting, yeah. out, yeah. And I got up into my tree stand and I put this on, I had it around my neck, and then it started kind of raining and drizzling, getting a little nasty, and I put I put it up right around my face and it was so warm. Oh, and awesome. it didn't get wet on the inside. A little tiny bit damp. Sure. But not wet. Not like the other like I used to use polyester cowls that mm -hmm. I would, you know, throw over my face. And those things, they would be soaked, and it was gross. Yeah, <laughs> because oh, yeah. by the time you, just from the they water were really vapor, thin, right? The yeah, one that you, super, yeah. super thin. That was like a store bought one. Yep, and this is just so much nicer so cool. to use. So, yeah, it knit up super quick. I mean, two or three days. Yeah, <laughs> like, you had that done. It quick. was because you cast quick. on I think Wednesday of last week, and you had it done by the weekend, right? Yeah. Yeah, yep. and that, you weren't working on it like super a ton no either. like you no, worked out, I get up, it went really fast yeah yeah well and i think that helps that it's mostly stocking at and yeah. so you can just keep going around in circles yeah um that's so cool but it's yeah it's really really neat i enjoyed knitting it up awesome, awesome what awesome. have you got i have just this little guy so i have this teeny little <laughs> this teeny little mitten um so this is this is for the, um, oh gosh, what's the name of it? Mitten, Mitten Garland Advent Calendar. And so this says number one. So this is the first out of the 24 that I've knit. And I just finished it. I, um, so this is where I was at when I started on this, like, last week. I cast this on the day before my birthday and never really touched it after that. Like, I maybe worked on it, like, once or twice. And then it just kind of sat there unfinished. So I was like, you know what? This is a tiny little thing. Get it done before the mystery knit along. It'll be one more thing off my needles. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, I just, I really love it though. Um, it, I use DPMs. It calls for size one. It's a fingering weight yarn. It's Knit Picks palette. And um, I, uh, I use the DPMs with it and it's, it's kind of fiddly for me. So I, yeah, I think. Yeah, you were talking about that. Yeah, I think I'm going to use Magic Loop for this next, the next one that I do. Um, the only thing is I only have one circular magic or uh circular size ones so and i use that to start my toe up socks <laughs> so and i've got to start one still so i need to cast that on first and then i can um switch to dpns after the toe is done well and then are I can they use interchangeables that. no they're oh, fixed one bummer. yeah um but yeah i love this thing and it's a non-super wash and it's just too dang cute but uh and it's this is a free pattern um yeah, you so i can't get under sorry you can't probably can't get interchangeables in a one can you i don't that? know i don't i I, you usually don't see them in a set, but there might be like a sock set out there that has interchangeables, but I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, that would be an awful, there wouldn't really be a lot tiny, of room like, screw, in that with yeah. that screw, yeah. Yeah. It'd be very easy like to break off, I feel I would, like, yeah. I would think so. But it's yeah. all standard size uh, amongst uh, sets. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I'd be know. curious. Anyway, um, sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine. Um. So, yeah, so each each mitten is different for every day. It generally uses, like, th there's, like, this kind of color palette. Um, there's, like, another gray, a dark gray, and, and things like that in there. Um, but it's super cute. It's a free pattern set. Um, you can buy it on Ravelry if you want, if you want everything, like, in one PDF. Um, but if you go through her website, you can get them for free there. So, and I do want to make a note, because um, I didn't realize this till like, halfway through the mitten. Um, when you go on her website, there's the there's the picture of the uh, garland, and then right below it, it'll say the mitten pattern, and then it'll say mitten one, two, three, four, and so on. I totally missed, because it was just so tiny, where it said the mitten pattern, so all I downloaded was the chart, and so I was just going off of the chart, and I was like, oh, and like, because it didn't really tell you 
um, for like your increases. I've just done a couple mittens now that I kind of just knew what to do, right. but it didn't say, it didn't have a legend or anything. So it gotcha. didn't say where you're increasing and uh, what type of increase to do. So, but then I found the pattern. And so it's the generic pattern. It just has a different chart for each one. And then it says to do it in there. So if you download the pattern, <laughs> you can actually see what you're supposed to do. So I thought that was really funny. I figured like halfway through, I was like, oh, okay. Which I'm glad because I would have ran into trouble, but for like the thumb and everything. But yeah, I thought that was definitely. funny. <laughs> I got to knit a pair of mittens. You should. You so should. You know any, any good patterns on DK? Because I, I got some DK laying around. Not at the top of my head, but I'm sure we can find some on Ravelry. Yeah. Because I think there's somewhere like, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tin Can Knits has one because you can do it. It has it for like different um, weights. Oh, okay. On there. So you can do a worsted or a DK and they have the numbers for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. And it's a free one too. But Neat. yeah, so that is, oh, and that's by Kathy Lewinsky. And um, I will have a link for that in the show notes. Um, show notes are right in the description box below here on YouTube. And yeah, that's it for my um, finished objects. You got anything else here? No, I don't actually, I mean, it's, I don't have anything else yeah, finished. Yeah, besides the sock, that's the only thing you got going, right? The thousand year yes. sock? Yeah. It'll, <laughs> it'll happen. It'll happen. It's going to happen while I'm out in the deer blind is what's yeah. going to happen. It's when I'm sitting there and well, that's why I've got like a million socks going. It's just that heel flap and gusset, man. After that, I'm set. Yeah. I, and that's what's crazy. Is it's that where you're same, at right now? Yes. Yeah. The same thing happened with the last sock. Yeah. I got up and got into that and then it just, just slows you down it, i just don't want to work on it i don't blame I, you. I look at it and i oh, i hate it's you it's frustrating though because you, <laughs> <it's, laughs> you have so much hatred for <laughs> right it just and it glares back at me <laughs> whispers mean things in the night it's just a bad project for me and as mean soon as I, it is a mean sock it's an evil sock um and i love the other one i've got one done <laughs> <laughs> It'll get done, it and will. then I'll. Um, you can take your time, There's and then no I'll rules. never knit that pattern again because <laughs> I just we'll find can't it. get into yeah, it. Yeah, we'll find a new one. Um, one that actually like you can follow it as it is. And all yeah, the numbers well, that's right. the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing because it takes me back to when I first started in any like. Every couple of rows, it feels like I have to go, Tiffany, can you help me with this? <laughs> I didn't Which mind. I, I know you didn't mind, and I don't mind asking you, but it's a pain when you get up sure. to that point and then you just can't knit any farther. Yeah, when you just want to keep going, you've got time to work on it and you can't. Yes, yeah, exactly. I get you. So, For once sure. that's done, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll golden. start knitting more socks. Maybe. Maybe I'll you're gonna be like a sock crazy person. Like yeah, you're gonna be maybe. like all of the. I feel socks. like that happens a lot mm -hmm. in the, in the uh, knitting community. I totally. hear a lot of people that started out not liking, yeah. um, not liking fingering weight stuff, and then they inexplicably decide that they love it. Maybe yeah. I'll get to that point. Yeah, that's okay. Or maybe I'll love worst and stuff. Yeah, because it, it doesn't matter quick. either way. And I can see it. Yeah, because my eyes are bad. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Is yeah, whips. Do you have any whips? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. Because. Okay, whips. I have whips. <laughs> whips for the poor. Right. Okay. Yeah, we are like tired. <laughs> I'm so exhausted. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Okay. Yes, I have a few works in progress. Um. <laughs> And now I'm on my giggle, giggle fit. Okay, so my first work in progress, which is in, um, it's in my bag from Stitch In You Bags. And it's got the angry little sheepies on it, which just, I love. They just kill me. I just think it's so cute. And I am working on a project that I have not shown in ages. Um, when I'm all tangled up here, let's see if we can get oh, no. situated here. I got a little mini skein that went rogue. <laughs> There's got to be a better system for that, and I'm going to invent it. <laughs> what happens like to me, too? You, you guys undone. ever get that where you, you put your project in your bag, and then somehow it gets more tangled than it could have been if you had tried to tangle it up? It's like <laughs> there the we go, equivalent of headphone cords. I know it. Back when we used to use headphones with actual cords on I them. know it. It's a new, a new day. It's 2018. <laughs> yes. Headphones don't have cords. I still, I still use them. Yeah, I do too. I have my Except iPhone Except now, now my new phone won't uh, 
Except yeah, it won't it take doesn't em. have an aux jack because it's an iPhone 8 yeah. Plus. So you have to get the Bluetooth one. We well, have know. Bluetooth ones, but exactly. you don't have the little ones. Yeah, so like I can't AirPods. use your poverty headphones. No. Nope. <laughs> My free ones. Yeah. So, okay. Um, what I've got going on is a sock. So this is the, uh, this is on our sparkle base. And this is the watercolor colorway. And I hand wound this one because I don't know why I did it. I think I just didn't want to get out the Swift and decided that hand winding would be fast. No, this is the one that uh, was all tangled. That's why I hand wound oh it. Oh my gosh, it was I so forgot tangled. about that. Yeah. I didn't just, uh... but yeah. Oh, I love it so much. Maybe you can see the sparkle. And this is Lurex. This yes. This is Stellina. So it's very, um, very vivid. Which, yeah, it's very, very vivid and it's very forgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, for people that are starting to yarn dye, uh, yeah. that are just beginning, the Lurex is very forgiving for dyeing technique. It doesn't yeah. lose its sheen, really. You don't have you to do vinegar. You can kind of abuse it. Yep. You can use citric acid like normal, and uh, it's still good to go. So this is where I'm at, and um, I just put in a little orange heel. That looks really nice. Thanks kind of picks up the little orange sparkles. Yeah. Right? Well, the other one um, that I'm making is going to have a blue heel because these were some leftover mini skeins um, from the shawl that I'm wearing, actually. So, yeah. So that's going to be the other sock. So, the blue and orange ones. And um, I'll probably do opposite for the toe, but yeah. So this is the colorway knit up. And yeah, I'm loving this colorway. You need to dye more of this one. I love this one. Mm -hmm. I think it's so so pretty, but yeah. So I've got I've got a little Michigan Progress Keeper on there. Yeah, and maybe maybe there we go. And then oh, I've never showed this one. This is a <laughs> one that I kind of just put together myself. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, because so it's got a little T on it and then it's got a little um like a little gem on there and I just put it on one of those oh those you know those progress keepers that in stitch markers that you can get in like bulk um so I just put it on one of those because this is from a necklace that I got from being in my cousin's wedding oh cool and but I'm have a really weird like uh metal You're sensitivity so allergic to everything yeah it's yeah I mean it's not weird I guess a lot of people have it but except for 24 karat gold surprise yeah me. darn <laughs> <laughs> but um so well and diamonds I'm, <laughs> not allergic to diamonds not either. at all <laughs> um so no um but like sterling this is sterling yeah this is sterling yeah. silver this yeah. um this doesn't give me any trouble at all but like um but I think sterling silver on my neck does it's really weird it's so weird and so and if it's like nickel um, or surgical steel, I can't do that. If it's um, got any nickel in it, forget it. And so yeah. I could. Because I bought you a pair of earrings mm -hmm. when we first got together. It was like surgical, surgical steel, yeah. hypoallergenic. Still like, gave me trouble. Yeah, still gave me trouble. Yeah, earrings are like the the most sensitive, and then yep. it's the neck, and then uh, my my wrist is usually good. You got me a bracelet. That's fine. Rings yeah. are fine, but plastic's fine. Plastic's used good. Have, <laughs> used to have like gauged. Yeah, I had ears, uh, yeah. gauges. I mean, it's not gauges though. They, no, we call them something else. No, really I don't remember what they called though. Call them gauges. I don't remember because I I didn't have them for super long. I had them for maybe like a year or so, but because well, because I was allergic to so many earrings, I was like, well, I'm just gonna go with plastic. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. They weren't big though. They were no, they, they were, were little, little ones. The I don't remember. Gosh, that was forever ago. That was like. 2009, 2010. Yeah, forever. <laughs> back in the olden days. Yeah, back in the Stone Age. But it was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't. Um, what were we even talking about? I don't You're even talking know. About your stick, we were talking about your <laughs> stitch marker and how you're allergic to it. To life. I'm allergic to life. You're allergic to your <laughs> stitch marker. But um, <laughs> I'm allergic to dogs and I'm a dog groomer, which is just... I think you've gotten better about that. Yeah, though. it has. Yeah, it was really bad in the beginning, because I've been there for seven years, and yes. uh, <laughs> it was really bad in the beginning. But so this is on watercolor. Yes, watercolor is the colorway, and and that's my stitch marker because I can't wear it around my neck. So I just made it as a I just made it into a stitch marker. Oh, my needles! I'm talking about my needles. Um, these are Knit Pro Zings, um, size one, two point two five millimeter. You know, I thought they were signature needle arts at first. They kind of look like that. I know. Like Don't they look a lot like that? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same style. 
It's really They're cool. not as, well, at least. Not as pointy. They don't have the stiletto tip. Yeah, that's the one I got. Oh, I love those. So signature, cool. signature needle arts is where it's at. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, and then I've got my cozy because it is hunting season officially. Oh, yeah. It totally is. <laughs> and this is from uh, Simply Serving, Miss Lindsay. She made me this. And um, Ethan has a matching one. Why won't that focus? Let's see. There we go. Um, and yeah, so Ethan has one that matches in orange. But yeah, I love this. Super cute. I want to do up my nails. I have uh, some jamberry that have that'll jam match that. Yeah, I totally still have those. You got a ton of jamberries. You went I know. through a phase with jamberries. I know, I did. You... I think everybody did. Well, girls. Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming. I wouldn't but... say everybody. <laughs> um, a lot of people went through it though. They do hold up surprisingly well though. Yeah, although I think they're going out of business, but I don't know. I haven't bought from them in forever. I just still have a ton left over from when the craze was big. Yeah. But, yes. So, yeah, I think that's all I've got to show for that. Um, then I've also got my Cipola sweater. Yes, and why is it called Cipola? Because I actually messaged Caitlin Hunter She's and asked. been doing asked. some detective work. I did. I asked her. I, like, wrote it out phonetically. I said, is it Cipola? Or Cipala. And she was like, Cipala. She said that's um, that's how her mom pronounces it. And I believe it's her mother's maiden name. That's so, so cool. Yeah. So I'm just really happy to know. So I don't have to worry anymore. I don't have to debate. <laughs> now I feel better about mispronouncing it. Because now that I know that it was a last name, I give myself a little <laughs> bit of leeway. Because I'm so terrible with pronouncing names anyway. Oh, I thought you were going to say because our last name gets mispronounced a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does. Shemansky. Yeah. It's S-Z-Y. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, it's good bad. Irish names, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, totally. But anyway, <laughs> I am bad with, with last names. Except for Polish names. I'm good with those. You got that down. But anything else. That's so funny. So, so yes. Cipola. Cipola. So, this is my Cipola sweater. And honestly, I did not get much done, but I still thought I'd show it because we figured out how to say the name. And, and we could say Cipola 300 times. Yes. To re-educate ourselves. Yes. So I also want to show off my progress keeper because I didn't show well, this off last time. Well, that's I think that's quite a bit of progress. Yeah, right? From, from yeah. where my little... For, for a week? Yeah. You and, know, and, and I didn't work other, on it very often. And you've got other projects on the needles. That's, that's quite a bit projects. of progress. Yeah. Yeah. And I uh I only worked on it a couple of nights, I think. Like maybe like two nights or so. Yeah. But um but I gotta show off this progress keeper because it's too dang it cute. Is cool. So this is this little pumpkin pie and it's from Little Bitty Delights, Amanda. And um she sent this to me last year and I freaking adore this. It's so cute and she just she did such a great job on this and it's just Adorable. So I, I've been switching out my um, little stitch markers for like fall themed ones. Yeah. So that's fun. Oh, and the colorways. This is our yarn. Um, the colorways are orchid and dove. So I don't think we have either of those in the shop right now. We do not. But yeah, we got a lot of fall stuff going on right now. We do. And this week we'll be starting some winter stuff too. Yes. It's that time of year yes. where we start doing winter stuff. Yes. <laughs> and. Uh, Basically, it's like Walmart and any of the big retail places. You start seeing Christmas stuff. Well, pop no, out. we weren't. We didn't. We didn't push it quite that close because, or quite that early. Walmart's. They I, had it out. Yeah. End of July, August. Did they really? Yeah, they were starting. Kmart were did too, stuff right? Around. Yeah. That's where Tim works. Yeah. It was. I'm going. Jeez, oh, Pete's guys. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, I don't even go into the section. I, don't even I haven't either. I love Christmas, but I, that I am waiting a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy fall for a little I bit. I am enjoying, like, dyeing the stuff up yeah. there. Like that, because you, you, knitting is a different yeah a different story because you got, you got to start earlier. Like, yeah. way earlier. For me, I start celebrating Christmas November 1st. <laughs> like, after Halloween. I know what you do. I'm, the, I'm on it. It's, I start, it's like a two-month ordeal. I kind of start around November 15th because that's yes. the opening day of bo or, uh, rifle season. And yeah. So, yeah. That is like your Christmas, yeah. Definitely. That's funny. Yeah, um, that's where we're <laughs> we're both Christmas crazy, but <laughs> two weeks apart. <laughs> two weeks apart, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yes, I got one more project that I've been working on. My cozy memory. And I actually worked on this one. You a did. Little. <laughs> you did. You knit a few stitches. You could see how the needles. I knit a few rows. 
Oh, you did do a few rows. Yes, I, I did. Don't I'm sorry. diminish my work. <laughs> <It's a side. laughs> I can't even tell where it is. I don't even remember which square I was It was uh, this one. Oh, was it? It was Party Poodles. So this is one that... <laughs> All right, there you go. This is one that I finished, that slash Ethan finished. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is our colorway party and poodles. And notice you can't tell where I knit. I know, because it's just seamless. You did a good job. No, it's just because I only knit two rows. <laughs> <laughs> but. Okay, wait, this is the other new one. Do you want to show this one? Yeah, that is candy cornucopia. Yes, which might be a discontinued color. <laughs> There's no white about it. <laughs> But it's so cool though. It is a I cool really colorway. love this color. We really liked it, but I I, I well, thought this it was, was really cool. This is really cool actually. Um I loved that colorway, but nobody really liked it and so we gave it the old Well, it wasn't I don't think it wasn't that anyone really liked it. It was it was really bad timing last year. Because Halloween yeah. had, I think it was Halloween was just over when we put it in the shop. Like it was literally like the day after or something. So it was just bad timing, I think. That's true. But let us know if you want this colorway back If you back want it back, shop. I am more than happy to dye it up. I thought it was an awesome colorway, but... Especially because, like, right at the beginning here, it looks like a candy corn all the yeah. way across. And that's really neat. But, so yeah, that's Candy Cornucopia. And, yeah, just total Halloween yarn. Um, I, I think... kind of like a micro stripe thing going on. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, This, let's see, those are the only two new ones that I did. I, I didn't work on this much at all, but... I have a new plan with this. And I okay. think I told you about this. I don't remember. Um, I was watching Amber of the Yarn Hoarder podcast. And she was saying how she digs this out when they watch football. Oh, and that's she works a good on idea. it when she watches football. So I'm like, yes. That's a really and we watch a lot idea. of football. So I'm... We got to watch football tonight, yes. even. Yeah. Love it. Football so, season's the best. It is. And I'm not even like that into it, but I just like watching it with you. I really do. I'm that into it. I am getting more and more into it. I though. startle the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "Whoa, yeah. how long was I out?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the dogs. and then uh, Gert uh, starts barking when I start oh yelling gosh, at the TV. She does. She starts she does. yelling. At, she yells at the refs she, with me. It's great. <laughs> she also yells when we sing "Happy Birthday" to she anybody. Does, freaks out, starts barking and howling. And so it's awesome because if there's a penalty call that I think is not a penalty. <laughs> she agrees with like, you. Like poor Clay Matthews has been slammed with penalties oh this uh, this year. And so bad. The, on the second one, I freaked out, screaming at the TV, yeah. pointing at the ref, and the dogs up there just screaming, <laughs> just barking at the TV, oh, howling. Yeah. It was so funny. Oh, yeah, Tanya and I were talking about that. Tanya, Tanya gets it. She was yeah. like... I'm very serious about my knitting and my Packers. <laughs> yes, it was ridiculous. <laughs> oh Roughing man, the passer. It's bogus. That is bogus. Super bogus. <laughs> but yeah, I love. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's see if we can show this. Let's see can't how. Show the whole thing. No, I know it's gotten. It's gotten pretty big. It keeps going. It keeps going. So yeah, that is my cozy memories blanket. Um, I love this. It's thing. actually now a cozy memories shawl. Like, I know, right? Or um, blanket. <laughs> that's a no, it's a, what? That's a Stephen West thing. <laughs> he calls it a blanket. It's a shawl blanket, <laughs> or a blanket shawl. Like it's a shawl so big it could be a blanket. A <laughs> blanket. <laughs> oh, uh, it is. It is blanket size. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna let that one go, are you? Nope. I always, uh... She doesn't let jokes die. Oh, I don't. At my brother. Oh my god, my poor brother. He... <laughs> I'm I'm the worst with him, like... Yes. He's so funny. Yeah, he, he is. He's so funny. Really funny and so, guy. like, I just, like, like, hang on to something funny that You'll he says. latch on. And it's just an offhand comment. And, and I will, like, bring it up. Three, four years later, she's up, still quoting him. In. He's like, I don't even remember what I said. That. <laughs> or why. <laughs> Alright. We're really sorry. What else we got? <laughs> um, oh, I want to show my needles for that. So you got me yeah. these for Christmas. These were expensive needles because <laughs> yes. I ordered them next extra day shipping. Extra special. Extra expensive. Oh my gosh. It was $80 for these needles because I ordered them next day shipping. I had no idea. I, I was determined to get her signature needle arts needles for Christmas. That was so sweet. And uh, like two days before Christmas, I realized that I had not ordered them. 
And you're probably gonna give them to me like afterwards. I wouldn't yeah, but I wanted you to open them. I and they, know. They, like they really come in a nice presentation and everything. Yeah. So I wanted you to be able to open that was them. So and, sweet. And I. Did, it was like one of the last things you gave to me too. I think you. I were, was kind of in a frenzy, honestly, yeah. getting stuff like all wrapped <laughs> up, and it was a busy time, and yeah. so I was That's just so like, funny. ah, screw it. I think the. I think I the them. shipping was more expensive than the needles were because they go they're like what forty bucks. Yeah, 40 I think bucks so. Set. They're they're a treat yourself. Worth, worth every penny. Oh my gosh! So Honestly, these they're... these are the stiletto points, and I'm gonna focus it. Might have to. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. All right, we might not be able to get focused in on the stiletto points. There we go. Just nice. Need to be patient, I guess. Um, but yeah, so these these things are awesome, um, and you can customize it to whatever points you want and whatever end you want. Yes, you can. You can get uh, you can get engraving or monogramming, yeah. initialing, anything you really want. I think that's. You I think it's fifteen phrases. bucks to do the engraving. It won't do anything vulgar. Yeah, uh, you can't be naughty. No. <laughs> 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 Not that I tried, they just give you a warning on their site. Yes. Uh, for anybody that... Oh my gosh, you imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so, yeah. <laughs> but they, they do knit really, really well. They're worth every penny them. you spend on them. They're so smooth. And, man, you want to pick oh up stitches, gosh. they will pick up stitches. Yes, uh, I love them. They are great for that. I really would consider getting a... Um, a pair of circulars on something that I use a lot, like for shawl knitting or something. I know. I'm Although really considering I, like I just really do. building up a set of 16 inch circulars. I know. I was just thinking though, I don't really use metal for shawls. I found out, remember, because it like, oh, it's just a pain. Well, they do, but they do interchangeables, I think, yes. as yeah, well. Yeah, they do have so, a set. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. So if you win the lottery, yeah, go buy right. yourself a set of interchangeable Definitely. signature needle arts needles. Definitely. You won't regret it. Okay. Um, that's our whips. Got any whips? Well, that's See? Your... I can hold on to this. <laughs> <laughs> now... I just have to hold on to these jokes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got any acquisitions? <laughs> oh, okay. So, acquisitions. acquisitions. I think I got the giggles out. <laughs> I had to take a minute. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we were sent a pattern from Miss Amanda Cole and she sent us, um, fa fast and effective hats for all. And what it is, is it is a worsted weight hat and it has a little bit of texture to it. And yeah, it's got, um, sizes from like, let's see, I think it's toddler newborn up until an extra large so it's got all the sizes in between so she sent one to us and she also sent one as a prize for the podcast so that will be a part of our um my favorite colors october knit along um that'll be a part of the prizes for that probably going to give away some patterns as um chatter thread prizes so if you've Definitely. been chattering keep on chatting so um let's see and then i made a little order to Simply Serving. <laughs> <laughs> I, first of all, you, you know we love Miss Lindsay. Yes, we do. Love her. So, I was looking at her Etsy page, and I was like, you know, I thought that I had all six-inch DPNs, and then I was using some that were, the, we were talking about last week, the, like, Susan right. Bates ones. And those are not six inch, those are longer. So she has some nine inch cozies in her shop and I have been eyeing this one a lot. And I just thought it was so cute. And so it's got the little trees on there and then these cute little birds and I just love this so much. So I'm really excited to start using this and um, and use it with my, my longer DPN. So I'm really excited about that. Then I also ordered <laughs> this is so cute. I ordered a super cute little little ghost cookie. <laughs> and he's got a little lollipop. And is it a... Yeah, it's a candy corn. Yep, a little candy corn. And he's just the cutest darn thing ever. And these are actually sold out. Um, so I don't know if she's going to be restocking these or not. But I just saw in her shop today that these are sold out. But 
Oh my gosh, so cute. But she's got tons of fun charms in there for different holidays. She's starting to get Christmas ones in and so cute. But Miss Lindsay surprised us. And with our order, she threw in this little bag, which first of all, how cute. I love like the size of this. I don't have like a little one. No, like this. it's perfect. I really like this. She also threw in this one. Yeah. So, yeah, super cute. And it's got a little measuring tape I on know. it. So darn cute. And then inside, which is so cool. This is like the perfect size for yeah. on the go stuff. Those you are know? good colors for you, too. Oh, yeah. Like, I just thought totally. that was so cute. And I, I totally snagged this one because I don't have any Halloween ones. And I was like, I really want a Halloween bag. So. I just I love it. So thank you so much, Lindsay. That was really thoughtful of you. Definitely. We truly appreciate it. These oh my are, gosh. These are awesome. She I love the stitching a, pattern she does. I know. It's so cool. It's got it on here, too. Yep. She's just such a generous person. She is. So, truly. and I don't think, I don't think we live very far from her statewide. No I think she's in Indiana or Illinois. I think she, I know oh, right she's on. really nearby. So sometime we'll have to go see Miss Lindsay. Definitely. Maybe at a fiber show or something. So... Yeah, I know she's super close by. I just can't remember which state. Um, but yeah, then let's see. I think that's all we've got for acquisitions. We've got Benny up on the bed, so if you see like earthquake <laughs> happening, shaking. yeah, that's why he's he's just getting cozy. He's literally like laying on my cozy memories blanket right now, and it's really cute. <laughs> he's curled up with it. He's got between his paws and everything. Oh, he's so cute. Good boy. So yeah, Mr. Benny, our yellow lab is up here. Um, Let's see. Now we're going to move on to spinning. So yes, I want to share my spinning. Super stoked. So for spinning, I finished up the bat that I got from Winding Wool Creek Fiber Mill. And it's called the Crazy as a Bat Bat. And I <laughs> I got this at the uh, Michigan Fiber Festival just this uh, last August. And it was just two ounces, and I finished spinning it up last night. Um, it's still wet. I just finished it last night, and so I was having it hang to dry. Um, you were whacking it this morning. I was. It was fun. Just really get your aggression out, you know. <laughs> Any frustration what you've got. What aggression do you have? I don't have aggression, <laughs> but <laughs> my friends in high school always said I'm about as angry as a bunny rabbit. Yeah, you really are. <laughs> but, um, cool. so here's my dilemma. I'm not very happy with how I spun this. Um, I, it ended up being just a touch overspun. And let's see. There we go. Cool. So you can kind of tell it's just got a touch overspun. So it's a little bit ropey. Um, and I was trying out a technique that I'm not very confident in. And so that's, I think why I got a lot of inconsistencies because I'm really right. comfortable with short forward draw. Comb top, short forward draw. I can do that. That's like this. Like one of these. Uh, you know, I'm really comfortable with that. And you can see this yarn is much more consistent than this one. So with this one, because it was a woolen prep, I was using a woolen draft. So it's how you pull the fiber out of the, out of it. So with this with this draw it's a little more inconsistent um so what i was doing was i was doing a short backward draft with letting twist in so i wasn't smoothing it out um as i was spinning and if you guys don't know a lot about different like draws to do i really recommend the craftsy class um which i don't think it's called craftsy anymore but um it was a craftsy class called spinning from worsted to woolen with JC Boggs Faulkner and I love that class. I highly recommend it. Um, and that's where I learned all my different draws and stuff. But so I, I did that and it's, it wasn't very consistent. I think I overspun just because of something new. So I was treadling faster. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so there's some parts that aren't too bad if we can get this to focus, but um, still, it's just, it's not, not what I wanted. I was really, really, I'm more upset, like, not really upset with the thick and thin. I'm more upset with how tightly I spun it and plied it. Um, and I did a chain ply with it, too. And I only got about 50 yards out of it, out of two ounces. So it kind of goes between, like, a worsted to a bulky in some places, and then other, it's all over the place. <laughs> like, crazy <laughs> with the different, uh, 
but I love the colors. And originally my plan was to apply it with something either cream or brown. And, but I really, really loved the colors that I was seeing on the wheel and I didn't want to mess with that. You know what I mean? I just really liked it. Um, and then, yeah, I was just really itching to get it done too. So I tried to apply it up with the white and I just didn't like the look of it. So I stopped. But yeah, so that's my, my spinning. Um, I really, really love it. I'm going to, I'm like determined now, like I'm going to practice some more with this, with these woolen, woolen yarns. Right. I want to get better at it. So, um, but I'm really happy with it. Any suggestions on what to knit with 50 yards? I was thinking maybe just like a mug rug, <laughs> you know, cause that's just tiny. You know right. what I mean? Um, even something like, like almost this size, that little one that I got right there. I don't know if you guys could see that. Oh, you probably can't, but it's just a little one that a little mat that my mom made me um but yeah i was thinking maybe even a headband mm -hmm. but oh, a headband would look really nice yeah i might do that but i'll um, do a headband because that that color um i that would go really well with your hair see this is the color i'm looking yeah. for <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> we, <laughs> we watched mean girls last night this is the color I'm looking for. <laughs> Are you a natural redhead? Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> it was Mean Girls Day yesterday. It was October, October 3rd. 3rd. So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that would look really good with your hair, though. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I'm just really bummed about how I, how I spun it. But yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. You know, as I was going through it, I was like, you know, it's just practice. I've got plenty of fiber I can practice with some more. Um, it's not ruined by any means. It's just tighter yeah. than I wanted. Um, so, so yeah, it's all good. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to improve that for sure. Cause I feel like I'm really comfortable with my short forward draw now and I want to, I want to move on. So, um, but yeah, any suggestions would love it. Um, and like I said, it's, it is all over the place as far as size. I haven't done the wraps per inch yet, but I mean, it goes all the way from maybe even like a DK <laughs> than this to like yeah, a, up to a bulky. A, I mean, it's all. I don't think you get down to DK quite. Yeah, I think it's worsted to bulky. Worsted to bulky. Yeah. There might be a super bulky oh, section in there. I Selena in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a couple <laughs> of super bulky sections for sure. But um, yeah, so that's my spinning. I love the color. I'm obsessed with that. I'm really happy with it. But yeah, let's move on to shop update. So we have an update tomorrow, which is Friday, Friday. October 5th. And yes. it'll be at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And our shop can be found at www.thewoolenhomestead.etsy.com. We do have a few things in the shop currently, which we'll show you. Um, and then uh, Ethan can let us know what he's planning to put in the shop tomorrow. So yay. Definitely. Yeah, and I'll start with... Um, what we got in the shop right yeah. now. There's not a ton. Well, yeah, and the stuff that I'm dying up is stuff that it will not, or that has, or is not in the shop right now. Sure, so it's not nothing the same is color going way. to be, yeah. Yeah. So, first up, we have autumn leaves, and we've yes. got this on Sturdy Sock. This is a really cool light brown base, and it's got greens and reds and yellows and little uh, specks of orange where the reds and the yellows meet, and those are so like we got a pretty positive response from this color. Yeah, way those this are year. so this fall is, colors. Yeah, and it, this one turned out honestly exactly like I was hoping it yeah, would when I, when beautiful. I first started uh, knitting this up. So or well, dyeing this up, <laughs> but it's um, yeah, it's a really really cool uh, fall colorway. Super super October like you know yeah. when the leaves just start to turn. Like kind of like what it's doing that, right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Where you've got the maples, you got the red and the maples, oh and then you know so some pretty. of the yellows, and and you've still got some of the trees that are larger that haven't quite turned yet, and it's yeah. green. So yeah, definitely looks looks just like um, looks just like fall. Yeah. We also have your song, and this is also on Sturdy Sock. And I happen to forget we we should have one of these in DK yes. in the shop. Yep, there should be tomorrow. one. In DK. There should be one. But. This is a nice light brown base, light like almost like a light brown pink base. Yeah, it's like a it's like a mauve. Yep, and it's got some nice deep pinks and some deep purples, um, almost like a black. Mm -hmm. Almost like a black, and and there are sections in there that you could call black. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's really really pretty. And this is uh, after an Elton John song. Yes, it is. Your so, song. Yep. This is your colorway. You came up with yeah, this. Yeah, yep. I dyed that up for the your color. Um I dyed that up for I dyed that up for the West Knits Mystery Knit Along. So. Yes. yes. We also have your firework, and this is on a very, very light gray base. This one um, has 
specks of bright purple in it and bright pink. And there's quite a few shades of uh, purple and pink in there. It yeah. ranges from dark to bright. And it, it's speckled all the way throughout yeah. on this one as well. So the speckles are pretty fine, especially on the pinks. Because of the, the uh, type of dye I use, it allows me to get some really, really fine speckling in there. You can kind of see. So also, we have a couple of tonals here. Any U of M fans yes. would like these. <laughs> We've got vintage blue jean on the top. And on the bottom, this is corn maize, and we spelled it corn maize, like M A I Z E. Which uh, I thought that was pretty, pretty clever. <laughs> so, uh -huh. um, this right here so is again. corn maize, <laughs> and it's just a nice bright, um, nice bright yellow. And it on the bottom is vintage blue jean. Both of these pair really well together. They pair really well with other colors as well. Yeah. Um, you could even pair corn maize up with uh, the next one we've got right here. This is butterscotch. Mm -hmm. And this one has some nice warm browns in there as well as being on that uh, nice bright purple <laughs> you can pair purple with it. That would yes. look really good. Uh, nice uh, bright yellow uh, base. And you can see corn maze there. If you wanted to do like a fade from speckles to mm -hmm. a tonal, you could do that with those two. Would and it would even cool. work with uh, oh, yeah. vintage blue jeans. So what else do we have? Well, we've got Lovebird. Yes. This one, when we put this in the shop, this is the first time this has been in the shop for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a nice light pink base and there's some purples and pinks and gold speckled throughout that and this is on our sturdy sock base as well yeah that's going to be in my mystery knit along shawl yes. as well i'm so excited yes it oh, will i'm so excited and then we aubergine. have aubergine yes. yeah and this one goes pretty well with honestly any colorway uh you pair it with just because the nature of the purple in there i mean there's it yeah. with um it's a really love bird purple. I mean, you could you could put it with uh, butterscotch and totally. get a you know the the yellow purple combination. I mean that that would work really well. Um, pairing it with autumn Ooh, leaves. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of amazing. Ooh. You wouldn't expect like a purple to go with pretty much everything, but this really does because it's so dark. I mean, it mm -hmm. just pretty yeah, much. Yeah, and your song is another one that I'm using in my shawl with you know, aubergine can, as well. You can put it right up next to anything else. Um, we also have Old Red Barn. That looks cool too. <laughs> exactly. And so that's what I'm saying. Like it yeah. goes pretty much with anything you want to put it with. Um, it, it makes a really, I mean, it would make a really nice standalone. Mm -hmm. But if you pair it with something, it would look awesome. Yeah. This is Old Red Barn on the top. And this is just a nice bright red. It's got some, uh, some almost like a faded yellow. Yeah, it's a very weathered red. <laughs> it's a very weathered. That's a good, good yeah. way to put it. It's very weathered red. And we also have... It really, have... really looks like in those fall photos where you see the bright red barn that does look a little bit yep. old, you know what I mean? It totally is that. Totally. It's that red. We also have Haggard's Happy Hour. Yes. And this is on our sturdy sock base as well. And this is just a nice white base with various shades of green in there and browns and pinks. And let's see, we... You can put I that love with old those two. Yeah. I love those two together a lot. Yeah, that would look really I, cool. Yeah, I like that a lot, a lot. And then, finally, we have Indian Summer. Mm -hmm. And this is on a deep gold base, and there's blues and reds. Um, there's some deep greens in there. I think there's only one of those left. There might be, yeah. So this is Indian Summer, which we were definitely experiencing yesterday, mm -hmm. that's for sure. So that's what we've got in the shop currently. Yes. Um, but tomorrow it'll be restocked. Tomorrow we'll be restocked. We're having a shop update on, um, it'll be Friday, October 5th at 6 p.m. Yes. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, you Throughout the day, as I usually what I do is on Fridays before the update, I skein up the yarn and I, um, I'll twist it into hanks, I guess. Yeah. And then I take pictures and, and photography uh, shoots of the actual yarn to post on Etsy. Usually what I've been doing is on Instagram, I'll post kind of previews. So if you guys yeah. want to kind of see some some neat shots of yarn, you know, see what's going to be in the shop, 
I'll post those as I get them done on Instagram tomorrow. Yeah. So you can turn so on post kinda, notifications if you want if you don't want to miss them. Exactly. And you can kind of Cuz it's so hard to out. see if you oh, just go on by feeds. It's so hard to see Yeah, cuz the Instagram al algorithm, yeah. I can post something and you'll see it a week later yeah. only at the top of your feed as if it just came up. Yeah. So the first one I'm going to have in stock tomorrow, we're going to put in My Favorite Colors October because we yes. don't have any of those. And that's a that's a real popular yeah. color with that yeah, one. Yeah, that one's sold out every single week. Yeah. Um, and within usually within the first night or so. Yeah. So um, if you're looking for that one, definitely set an alarm for the update because yeah, that one it, goes quick. It does. Um, my Favorite Colors October. I'll also have Deep Woods Camo, which yes. is this, and only gonna it's going to be on sock. sturdy socks. So We'll get more worsted again. We will get next, more worsted. Um, next time we order, we don't have any currently. Um, right. Maybe right. if we have any extra DK, we could do that next week. Yep, we could. But I think it would make killer socks. Oh, I know. It would be so cool. It would be awesome socks. Or um, a sock, a sock and hat. hat. Yeah, exactly. Boom. Yes. That's awesome. Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> Nailed it. It was crisp. <laughs> And I forgot about all the cuts on my hand too. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, we gotta talk about that. Oh. Yeah. So, um, what sock else? Hat sock hat, hat. hat. Yeah. Uh, you know, anything, anything with uh, fingering weight yarn yeah. would look really good. Good in. I'm also going to have um, blueberry crumb cake, but I'm revising the way that I'm dying it. Awesome. So blueberry crumb cake from here on out is going to look a little bit different. Well, it's but gonna be it's easier going to, to dye. be easier to dye, and it's going to be. A little bit more consistent. Yeah. Uh, the way that we died before, there's literally no way known to man to make it consistent <laughs> between it was, batches or even in between it was batches. Wily. <laughs> to get it the way that we had, it was it was incredibly time consuming. Yeah. Uh, so I'm changing that up. We're gonna have a brand new blueberry crumb cake. Fret not, it'll look great, or it won't go in the shop. Yeah. You know, exactly. If it doesn't, if it doesn't pass like our standards of going what we think it should look like, it's just not gonna make it to the shop. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> um. Or if it does, it'll be over dyed. Yeah. And that's fun <laughs> um, too, though. It is so much fun. Some of the best colorways that are the I think we, ones. are the ones that you over dye. Yep. And then you go, oh, man, because now i got to recreate that, which means I, I go back through the process. That's so, how yeah. Sweater Weather came to be. That was, yes. that was over dyeing. Um, so Blueberry Crumb Cake will be in there, the new version of it. Um, I'm going to have Chrysalis in the shop Ooh, that's yeah. coming back we've never showed that one on here yet we have not because it sold out yeah. within the first five it's minutes of the update really that it went into pretty. uh it's... and it was in different orders too if i remember correctly i don't think it was one person bought no. all of them it was different no. orders um so chrysalis will be back there i want you guys to have a chance to to see that one yeah. um that was a cool one i'm also going to have uh a new Two new colorways. Ooh. I haven't decided what they're going to be yet, but they are going to be winter themed. Awesome. They're going to I'm be. I'm excited about this. Uh, yeah, definitely. They're going I always to be like coming home from Christmas. work and seeing like the ones that you've done. Like if you do it yeah. on a day I'm at work and I'm like, oh, like you'll be like, look at this new color. But they're going. They're definitely going to be holiday themed. Uh, Christmas holidays, winter kind of theme. Because I know a lot of people like to start knitting stuff up a little bit oh, yeah. earlier for Christmas, especially if you're doing and, some, um, some gifts. Yeah. Um, Amy of Stranded Podcast, she has a Christmas sock knit along going on right now. So, okay. yeah, if yeah. you're partaking in that, we'll have some, we'll be, win but she said winter works too. It right. doesn't have to be like red and green, you know what I mean? But, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I, all I can tell you is the base colors in these ones are going to be red on one Ooh. and blue on another one. And we have not, to my knowledge, had a red base. Just one Melisandre, but that was like a one well, time. Well, I'm talking about winter. Oh, no. We've not had a Christmas themed or winter themed red base mm -mm. Uh, no, we yarn haven't. yet. So we've got a red based one and cool. we've got now a. Now that we have a red that's not unruly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> For all you dyers out there, uh, honestly, all of you, especially people that are beginning, um, really beast. shop around for your reds because. Red the beast. Yeah, get yourself little sample packets. Find out what works best for you. Because I've yeah. heard of some people who use a different red than what we use, and uh, they like it. it. Fine. They love it just fine. Yeah. But the red that we use, we there was a lot of trial and error before we figured we settled on a brand yeah. and a color that we like yeah. uh, for our red. So That's definitely exciting. shop around. And with all reds, mix them in hot water. <laughs> <laughs> just to save just yourself the heartache. Save yourself the heartache. <laughs> Otherwise, they like to gel. Yes, they do. Um, and they like to gel, and they like to clump really mm -hmm. badly but the the brand that we settled on has none of those issues and has been 
absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. So, um, yeah, definitely. So check out the update, 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on October 5th, Friday, October 5th. Yes. And stalk Instagram tomorrow. I'll be posting photos yes. of the, the new colorways will be on there. Uh, the colorways that are going to be in the shop will be on there. Yeah, just kind of yeah. come hang out with us. So exciting. So, all right, I think that about covers it for shop news. And next we have life stuff. Yes. So, life stuff. Life stuff. Life stuff. Lots of life things. Oh my gosh. It has been a busy week. Yes. I feel like we're always saying it's a busy week. Maybe we're just busy people. But yeah. um, it's been, nothing's really gone wrong this week. It's just been uh, needing more hours in a day sort of yeah. situation. You, you know, um, for you, you've officially accepted the manager position at PetSmart, right. correct? Yep, for the salon. For the salon. Yep. Well, the salon leader. They don't yeah. call it manager. Yeah, yeah, so. but it's called the salon leader. And, um, so, but so, it's uh, the manager. You make the schedule. You, you know, yeah. you make sure everyone's following policy. And Yeah. So what's been your favorite part about it? Um, I, I really like, um, I really like that everyone's been so supportive and everything. Like, I've got a great support team for managers that are above me. I've got a great support team of the girls that I work with, yeah. you know, because it's kind of weird going from, you know, working with somebody and then all of a sudden being their leader and making sure that they're, you know, right. following everything. Um, so that's trippy. <laughs> but yeah. it's but it's good, though. Like, everyone's been really, they, everyone was really hoping that I would take it. So that was really cool. Like, I felt like I had backing, mm -hmm. you know, and um, just... A lot of support so that's that's been really nice you know that's awesome so you're like you're enjoying it pretty well yeah I feel like I really am like at first you know there was a big learning curve it was really stressful for me at first yeah but well, that's definitely. with anything and I knew that was gonna happen so I kind of took a back seat from the shop and um, yeah I yeah, basically yeah, I for sure I come home on Fridays and I make the listings for the updates and then I kind of handle like Etsy, a lot of Etsy yeah. stuff. Um, quite a bit of the Etsy you do the stuff, packaging custom and orders, right? yeah. as far as communication, yeah. custom orders quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> I you still podcast. do quite a bit though. I mean, you edit the podcast, which is a huge job. Yeah. Just I'll, a huge yeah. job. We found a way to make it a little more streamlined. Which yeah. Helps, well, what we, what we do now is we, we record the podcast in sections. So you record the intro and then the cals and then yeah and then pause it, it in between you know, exactly and so you're only editing little segments of video rather than having to watch through the whole thing yeah it makes a big difference yeah i think it really does it goes a lot faster that way but it's still i mean it's still a big project especially when you don't have the uh the battery <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I but we all have a battery tomorrow, so yay. yeah. Yeah, because we, we've already run out of battery once yeah. so far today. Yeah. We run out every single time. Never every used to be time. a problem when it was just you. Yeah, when it was just me, it wasn't really an Maybe issue, I just but... ramble too much. No, I love your rambling. I love it. It's so much more fun having you on the podcast. You're supposed to go, you don't ramble. You don't Thank you. ramble. Thank you. No. <laughs> no, I ramble uh, too. We both do. <laughs> we feed into it. But that's what this section <laughs> is for. Um, what else have we been doing this week? I've been fixing up the truck quite a bit. Just because, not really fixing it up, the thing is still, like, uh, knock on wood, <laughs> it's still in great shape. It's yeah. bulletproof. We, I just happened to find a little rust spot in the bottom of the floor pans on the passenger side. It's pretty common in Michigan. Cars. Oh, my God. So common. Like, in Michigan, it's either... If it's a car that does that doesn't have any rust on it whatsoever, it's because it's a car that's only driven on sunny days in the summer. Yeah. If it is driven, if it is even six months old, if it is a car that is even six months old, um, and it's been driven in the winter months, it yeah. will have rust on it. There's no way to stop it. The only thing you can do is undercoat it and keep um, keep washing it through the winter, like the bottom blasts. We just use so much salt on our roads up here. Yeah that it it uh your your trucks will rust in fact there are a lot of people like a ton of people that will actually drive down to kentucky tennessee um the carolinas to buy a truck down there and drive it back up to michigan wait till it completely rusts out and then go back down <laughs> south and buy another truck yeah so i there was a, like a little a little rust spot a uh, little rust hole actually in the bottom of one of the floor pans so i'm just fixing that which is pretty cool because i've i've done that it's not a big issue right. um 
It's it's taking up a lot of time. You had a lot of rain. And, and so yeah, and that's been the main it. problem. Yeah. I haven't been able to work on it. I've been able to work on it in little like one hour, one and a half hour chunks. Yeah. Uh, because it's been raining for the last week straight. Every yeah. single day has been lot. raining. Every single day has been raining. And so when it rains, I can't put the sealant down around my patches for the floor pans. Yeah. I can't do... Um, I can't do any painting on it. And so I'm kind of like sweating a little bit here because it's getting to the point where it, the weather's starting to get colder and colder and colder. And so yeah. it won't, I don't have a heated garage to work in. And so if I, does, if I don't get a nice sunny day here before too long, <laughs> uh, luckily today's kind of sunny, but I got to yeah. dye yarn today. Yeah. <laughs> and tomorrow I've got to skein up yarn and do photos and that takes all day. Right. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see. It's so far I managed to get the patches on and the sealant on, and now I just have to run the the last coat of paint over it, and it'll look good as new. That'll be good. Um, and then I can get it back up on the road. And I've been putting a new stereo in it because the stereo that came with it, it just has a CD player. It has no auxiliary input. It has no Bluetooth. No uh, no way to connect a phone. And I mean, I think pretty much everybody nowadays, your phone is what you use for music. Mm -hmm. You just or audio books or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I stream Spotify and uh, Libby or Overdrive, depending on yeah. which app you have. It's for local libraries. Um, and so I, I could get a little Bluetooth connector, um, but I don't, I don't like using them because then you got to worry about charging them. Yeah. And it's just more distracting stuff. I just, and I happen to have a radio, like a from before. A, yeah, a really nice radio from my last truck. That uh, yeah. unfortunately Ford, when they designed the radio in their trucks, they designed it really weird. It's like this really like it goes straight back and then it slopes down and goes straight back again. And so you actually have to go into the back of the dash and take a Dremel tool or a Sawzall or some, whatever you want to use. You actually have to cut like little framing panels out of the back side of the dash. That's crazy. Yeah, and it's kind of, it's always been nerve-wracking me. I, the only other car I've ever had to do it on was a Kia Optima back in like 2008. Uh, back in the Stone Age, back in the Stone Age. <laughs> right? And and I just kind of expected that it's a Kia Optima. I mean, come on. Yeah. But man, right. Ford, get your act together. Here. <laughs> come on. So what you have to do is, you, in order to fit um, a radio back there, is uh, I, I can't remember what the um, what the abbreviation is for, but it's a, a DIN, D I N. And there's single DIN and double DIN radios. The big wide radios you see that are like that big. I bought that big. Those are uh, double DIN. And then you, the most common aftermarket radios you see, which are about uh, an inch and a half tall and eight inches wide or so, um, those are single DIN. And single DIN radios generally fit in pretty much every car out there. But this F-150 is uh. not even fitting a single DIN because of the way that it's sloped. And so I got to cut those little that support sucks. brackets out of the back. And uh, luckily it's all covered up. So you, you won't see anything. It'll look like yeah. factory by the time I'm done with it, but it's this is a pain. who likes cutting into their new truck? I mean, no, come on now. No way, man. So, but the upside is I will have Bluetooth connectivity because uh, my phone doesn't have an auxiliary slot, so I can't stick um, or a 3.5 millimeter jack. I can't stick regular headphones in. Right. So, been working on that. Yeah. Um, we sold my brother the old Impala. Yes. So getting that ready for him. Um, what else? Oh, hunting. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Hunting. Hunting. It's been, big hunting. In between everything else, I'll put my entire life on hold for hunting. Uh, and the season started on October it's very, 1st. Very, important. And it was pouring rain. Oh yeah, that stunk. Pouring rain on October 1st. Uh, and I won't, I won't bow hunt during pouring rain. Primarily because, I don't mind sitting on the pouring rain. I kind of like it actually. But you can't track a blood trail in pouring rain. God, I can't imagine. Yeah, and it, it that would just be. You can get away with you can get away with more rain in the early season than you can late season because all of the leaves tends to, um, if it kind of makes an umbrella, and so if you if you shoot something, you have a lot more time to track it. Yeah. Um, but because deer are deer are really really tough critters, like they. Um, your neighbor's practicing the drums again. Every single... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I know, it's distracting. 
<laughs> I don't think it's audible though. I don't think I heard it in the last no, weeks, but no. I just think that's funny. That apparently this the time that we podcast is the same time that he plays drums. Probably. I've never heard him play it any other time. <laughs> Probably when he wakes up. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's a night owl. Yeah, uh, sorry. But when when you um, when you take a shot on a deer, deer are really, really uh, tough critters and they're prey, and so they're designed to do this. Their adrenaline works so quickly that they can be pretty much dead and not even know it yet. And they'll run 100 yards. Um, they will They will even take like a heart shot and run 100 yards and be dead and just not know it. Uh, just That's because crazy. their adrenaline is is pumping so fast, they're so they're prey animals that are so wired to flee as quickly as possible from danger. Yeah. Well, 100 yards doesn't really sound like that much, but when you're talking about thick brush that you can't hardly see 20 yards into, yeah, uh, that it, would it can make a big difference as far as tracking. And so, what you do is you you just follow a blood trail. And if it's pouring rain, you worry about that blood trail getting washed away. Yeah. That's why I won't archery hunt during um, during really really heavy rains. Um, with with a rifle, it's a little bit different because you have hydrostatic shock involved, and so there's generally a much heavier blood trail, and it's uh, it's Easier to track it, much more often that the that the deer goes down immediately, uh, just due to the hydrostatic shock and the shock and immediate drop in blood pressure. Right. Um, but for Archery, not so much. So anyway, moral of the story, uh, I was, it was, it was Monday, I think it was Monday, was it Monday, opening day must yeah. have been Monday. Yeah, it was. Uh, and it was just pouring, pouring rain. Um, I think Lindsay, um, or yeah, um, hooked on owls, uh, Lacey. L Lacey, sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I knew it wasn't Lindsay. Yeah, <laughs> I knew like, it was something. something. It was something with Lacey from Hooked on Owls. Um, I told you I'm terrible with names. Uh, I know <laughs> her. Podcast, though. Is it her yeah. boyfriend or her fiance? I'm not sure. I think it's her. I'm not sure. Okay. Significant yeah. other. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I th he got rained out too, from what I hear. Yes. And yep. She's standing on her Blogtober. They're on the thumb, right? Yeah. Yeah. Carol. Yeah. So. So he, he got rained out too, unfortunately. But uh, the last couple of days have been great. Um, I went out with a slight drizzle on Tuesday, and then Wednesday, yesterday, I went out with my brother, actually. He decided to so tag along. Cool. It was his first time hunting out of a tree stand, and so we got out a little bit late because uh, I had to help him set up the tree stand, had to show him. We use climbers. When well, he had we school, hunt. too. Yep. So that was that messed yeah. up with it a little bit, too. Yep. And so I, um, he, we use climbing tree stands, which are, Ugh, no, thank you. <laughs> you can go as high or as low as you want, <laughs> but there's ladder stands, there's climbing tree stands. We use climbers. It was his first time trying a climbing tree stand. How'd you like it? Oh, he loved it. Did he? He loved it. That's cool. But, uh, but you're in a, a harness, at least. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're totally strapped to the tree. It's actually in the, I posted a, a picture on Instagram of me and you can actually see my climbing harness yeah. going up the tree behind me. Um, be and, rope. Yeah. <laughs> we got, well, someday we'll have to tell the story about Tiffany's, uh, hunting, hunter safety yes. course, um, <laughs> at least in Michigan. And I, I think it's the same for pretty much every state. You have to take a course, um, before you can legally buy a hunting license, you have to take a, a hunter safety course that teaches you re responsible firearm yeah. safety and how to ethically take game and, you know, not to be a tool to other hunters, uh, things. I took it with a bunch of like twelve year olds. It was funny. Yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> I took it with you because yes, you did. I like. I honestly, I like to take them every like ten years or so. Well, it's that just way a I nice didn't have refresher. to go alone, and it wasn't expensive, and it was yeah. it was kind of fun. And so it was. It was a lot of fun for sure. But uh, yeah, last night I uh, I that was when we first got together too. I think yep. it was a long time ago. Um, last year I or <laughs> last night jumped a deer out as I was walking in. And uh, it it had scented me, it could it could smell me, and anybody and it started clearing its nostrils and took off in the other direction, and anybody that has ever heard a deer clearing its nostrils will know that it's the weirdest, creepiest, <laughs> nastiest sound in the world. They like it's like a sneeze and a scream at the same time, and they take off. It sounds like something from a horror movie. Yeah. Uh, and it's something you want to be prepared for if you ever decide to go out hunting, especially <laughs> if you're alone, because uh, the first time that it happens to you, it'll scare. You'll need to change your underwear. Uh, 
It'll scare you to death. So as I'm up in the tree, I haven't seen anything all night. Oh yeah, for the next three months, you guys will be hearing haunting stories. Uh, as we I got a lot of people that are yeah, hunters, we do. though. We do, or at least no hunters. Yeah, a lot of people whose husbands are hunters. We mm -hmm. had someone who was a hunter herself. Yeah. On Instagram. Um, yep. But. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm up there, and I haven't seen anything for a couple of hours, and it's getting dark towards the end of legal hunting hours, and I start climbing down, and wouldn't you know it, mm -hmm. there's a deer 50 yards off to my left, takes off, crashing through the brush, oh, doing its sneezing thing, clearing its nostrils, and I'm just sitting there in the tree stand like, you kidding me? I couldn't <laughs> have waited like five minutes for this thing to come in. But it just means my hunting season lasts a little longer. Yes, exactly. Uh, what else have we done yeah. oh we saw iron wheel farms yes. daniel and andrew yes we saw this is so funny well it wasn't funny for for poor andrew it was but, funny <laughs> to see them <laughs> yes but the situation but the situation was a yeah. bummer for him but yeah, um for sure. we okay so i worked till nine um at petsmart on tuesdays and since ethan had been hunting and the truck is kind of out of commission at the moment um he picked me up from work so he go out hunting and uh we were like, oh man, Qdoba sounds so good. And Qdoba is literally next door to PetSmart. Like the building is attached. And um, so, you know, we got out at nine and went over to, to Qdoba. And uh, I see this guy in front of us and he's got a big old sling on and his finger was all wrapped. And it looked like something had just happened. Like I was like, oh gosh, it just looked like it hurt. Like I felt so bad. And then all of a sudden, there was a girl in front of him and she goes, hi guys, it was yeah, Danielle. It was, it was so funny. So that was awesome. So yeah, Danielle has, uh, and uh, Andrew have Iron Wheel Farms and they're um, up in Beaverton. So it's pretty close by. And uh, yeah, they um, vend a lot of the shows here and they're gonna be at the Ann Arbor Fiber Expo. And I have some of their fin sheep um, wool. So it's for spinning. And I cannot wait to get into that. I think I'm actually, I might do that for my next one to see because it's a real fall color. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty so yeah but that was so cool to see them so that was well, awesome <laughs> i and i first i noticed his boots before i noticed him at first because he was wearing muck uh wetlands i think it was um oh the muck, the muck boots they were muck boots muck yeah. boots i i'm not sure how common they are in the rest of the country but up here they're really really common some yeah. people up here use them as kind of a fashion statement some people use them for working in and and hunting in um and i use mine obviously for hunting and um and working in sometimes but if you hunt or work in them they actually don't last a really <laughs> long time they look uh, well loved <laughs> they look very well loved they they're they're good boots but uh they will get shredded they're a neoprene and and rubber it's like a rubber um a rubber boot and then the thigh area is all neoprene and if you walked anywhere in um in the woods with them for any period of time they will start to shred the neoprene and i was looking down at, at andrew's boots and it's just like shredded and i just happened to i happened to think wow yeah those are definitely he's used those boots because yeah. the same thing are happening to mine that guy's either he's either walked through some barbed wire or he's gone through um he's gone through a thicket with thorns yep. because for me I don't, I don't i'm not exposed to the barbed wire but uh little thickets with thorns and stuff in them it'll shred Scratch those them up, it'll shred them right yeah. up and I'm like, the same thing's happening to mine. And then yep. I noticed Danielle And then it ended and up she, being there. Yeah, so, so that was so funny. That, that was cool. That was so funny. So that was awesome to see them. And I yep. uh, can't wait to see them at the Fiber Expo. Yeah. And um, yeah, they're on Instagram too, Iron Mill Farms as well. And so you have to check them out. Um, let's see here. What else? Oh, I think that's it though. Um, just that we already talked about the podcast taking forever last week. Yeah. That, uh, it took forever. Oh my gosh. It was so one of those moved. days last Thursday. Well, we didn't really go into detail about yeah, it. Yeah, it was just one of those days, like, oh my gosh. the battery, first of all, we had, hadn't podcasted in two weeks, which I didn't think we had that much stuff. We had so much stuff to like talk about. Like two hours worth yeah, of stuff. Yeah, it was a two hour and 11 minute yeah. podcast. And this one might be approaching. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but we, the battery kept dying, so we had to stop all the time. Um, we... I don't even, well, I think we ran out. Like we overdid our limit on the you know the 25 minute mark. Um, one time when we were taking a break, I went because we have a place to go get blood work done right around the corner. So I ran over there to go get mine done, and it happened to be closed. And it wasn't even one of their normal days to be closed. No, like, normally they're closed like, on Wednesdays. It was Thursday, and yep. they just happened to be closed that day. And I was just like, 
Okay. And then I still had to go to Secretary of State because you had to dye yarn. So I was going to go for you to do the truck taken care of. Yeah. And then go over there. <laughs> because we had to transfer the title over. Yeah. And so yeah. I go over there and, uh, <laughs> and both of our names were on it. Well, I figured that since at least my name was on it, you didn't need to be there. And it turns out because we're didn't married. Have to be. Yeah. So it turns what out. What good is it for? <laughs> Why the heck did I marry you? If you can't sign my oh, name. I don't know. Maybe a yeah, lifelong commitment. You know, <laughs> companionship. <laughs> Certainly not for <laughs> Secretary of State privileges. That's right. for sure. Um, <laughs> so. Jeez, oh, peace. So I walk up there, and she's like, luckily it wasn't busy, though. Thank goodness. That was no. the one thing that did work in my favor, though. I, I literally sat down, and they called me up, which never happens. And our Secretary of State is the smallest. It is really hole small. In the wall, little hole in the wall, smallest Secretary of State's office, and the people there, they, you know, God bless them. They do their job, but they, there's only so much that you can work with when yeah. you've got such a tiny, tiny area. It's, it's, it's. I think it was probably built when the town was about half the size it is. Now. Yeah. But yeah, so um, so I walk in there, she's like, yeah, he's got to be here. Or you can fill out this form and blah, blah, blah. So, okay. So I go back home and I get the form and we fill out the form and then I run back out and I go, and thankfully again, it wasn't busy. Mm -hmm. We got it done. And then I think we came back and did the podcast or then I edited it. I don't know what happened. It was a lot of like stopping and it literally, it took like yeah. all day to do it last week. And so, then... And then when we try and put it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then when I tried to put upload it, um, I thought it had a because like okay, so I can I make it in iMovie, I edit it in iMovie, then I compress it in iMovie, and then I upload it onto YouTube. So I had gone through all that. It took forever, forever to get that done. And then I uploaded it, which I I don't remember if it took overnight or what, but right. took forever. I uploaded it and I. Have all right, it's up on YouTube. Woohoo, it's all done. And then I looked at the time, like this was like later on, I happened to notice the timestamp and it said it was an hour and 28 minutes. I was like, no, this is a two hour <laughs> one. What's going on? And then somebody had commented that it wasn't, that it cut out. And I was like, no. So meanwhile, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm at work. And then so I'm like, can't do anything for my phone with it. Right. Um, but I took it, I think eventually I ended up, I, I tried to upload another uh, up again. Cause I didn't know what the problem was. Um, and it still did it, but then it said, no, then it said, you can't upload the same video twice. Oh my gosh. So I had to take the old one down, try it again. You were in like a rage. Oh my God. I was so mad. And so and by a rage, I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> like, I, I like whined that's... a lot. I just whined. Yeah. A little whiny. I was really whiny. <laughs> and then, so, <laughs> so then we, um, Let's see. So I took it. Yeah, I took it down. And so people like I felt bad because it kept saying like, "Oh, so this one got so many views." Like, sorry, I gotta take it down again. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, I just kept trying it. So then I cleared off space on my computer, cleared off space in iMovie because we were talking before I hoard the files. Mm -hmm. And so I finally did that and tried it again. Still wasn't working. And this time it was less time. It was like a twenty-minute one. <laughs> Yeah. And meanwhile, you it like progressively got shorter. Yeah, and you you don't know what's gonna happen, so you have to like wait like four hours to see if it works or not. So that's why it took so long. And then I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna duplicate the po the project and make it into two parts. So we did it that way, and that worked fine. So it clearly iMovie our version at least is having an issue with it being a very long. Let's hope it doesn't happen to this one. I know. Hopefully not. Yeah. Because. Yeah, this one's been longer. Yeah. So as far as <laughs> today, the rest of the day, you're probably going to be editing, editing the podcast. I've got to, um, I've got to dye some yarn, and then uh, at football. some point, <laughs> football tonight. Yeah, it might be DVR football. It might no, be we're DVR. Gonna, we're going to watch football. It's going to happen. <laughs> we're going to watch live football. Uh, but I, at some point today, I've got to sell. Um, oh, your leaf springs. Some leaf springs. I had some leaf springs, which are the back, the leaf springs are the back suspension uh, for a lot of pickup trucks, a lot of spots, tons of styles of pickup trucks. They use a, a leaf spring, which is basically just a long strip of steel that's uh, forged really into heavy. a specific, uh, it's forged into like a bow type shape, and so it resists um, force from underneath, and so it makes it springy. These things are um, so heavy. And they're huge, and they're heavy, and I bought them <clears> years ago for another truck. They were very expensive, 
and then I never ended up putting them on the truck because I ended up selling the truck before I could yeah. put them on. I ended up saving the leaf springs. I don't feel like getting rid of them because they were expensive and they're a nice, uh, they're really nice. Yeah. And so I put them up on Craigslist, and so now I got somebody to come look at them today in between everything else. Two and else. six, right? <laughs> yeah, two and six. That narrow window of time between two and six. Uh, maybe they work for like the TV company or something. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Yeah, right. They're always doing that, like, oh, we'll be there between right. 8 and 6. Exactly. So, as far as I know, that's about it. Oh, I think so. uh, my brother and I are going to see Venom tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I'm going to pick him up and That'd we're going to cool. head, I don't know if he knows this yet, but we're going to probably head down to Birch Run. And, <laughs> that's the really um, nice theater. Yeah, it's really nice. So Yeah, that'll be good for you guys. Yeah, you guys haven't fun. gone to a movie. And our battery's flashing again. <gasps> okay, well, so that's question of the week. Gonna, Oh yeah, question of the week. Yes. Question of the week this week is, what is your favorite movie? What's your favorite movie of all time? Oh man. Do you know yours? Uh, oh man. Probably should pick one that I could answer really, really quick. <laughs> Here, uh, I'll say mine. Okay, what's um, yours? Okay, so I, I have two. <laughs> okay. But okay, one of my favorite ones, I love Hercules. Yep. That is my go-to movie when I am sad or just bummed. I love that movie the the disney version i love that movie um i love the music it's just it always makes me laugh i quote it daily i love it yeah. um my other favorite movie that always makes me laugh when i'm sad is just friends with ryan reynolds <laughs> i love that movie i got it okay got what's mine. yours mine's national lampoon's christmas vacation oh that's a good one that's that's my all-time favorite movie oh i didn't think about like christmas yeah. i love elf I love yeah that. but but um national lampoon's christmas vacation that's with a good one. Chevy Chase is spot on my favorite. Randy Quaid. So funny. I want to see um, some comments from last week's question of the week. Last week's question was, what's your favorite um, type of yarn to knit with or fiber? Let's see here. Um, okay. So Carolyn St. Pierre says, I recently realized how awesome a good old non-superwash wool can be. I think my favorite weight is fingering, and I'm really into Rama yarns lately. That's cool. Yes, I want to try Rama really bad. That's a really, like, very common Norwegian yarn for, like, mittens Definitely. and everything. Super, super great. Um, let's see. I think we probably got time for about one more. Yeah. Um, Esther says, I love your podcast. By the way, my favorite fiber to spin is with BFL and Silk 8020. I love to knit with 100% Merino Superwash and also a sock yarn. All right, So cool. yay, great. Thanks, guys. I think we're going to cut off here so we don't lose you. Um, but yeah, let us know what your favorite movie is in the comments below, and we will see you next time. And we'll read more of them next week. Yes. So <laughs> bye. See ya, bye.